Pulmonary hypertension, as the name implies, combines pulmonary, which involves the lungs, and hypertension, which is high blood pressure. So if we put those two terms together, we have high blood pressure in the blood vessels of the lungs. And this can occur for a variety of reasons, but it typically can occur when the blood vessels of the lungs get narrowed, constricted, or blocked. And this can cause elevated resistance for the right side of the heart to work against. So the most common signs of pulmonary hypertension are shortness of breath, tightness in the chest, Sometimes it can present as bloating or fullness in the belly, and sometimes it can prevent with swelling in the feet and ankles or swelling in the belly. Some of the later and more ominous symptoms are things like uh, passing out spells or feeling like one's gonna pass out, palpitations, heart racing sensations, and um, cardiac arrest. The challenge of pulmonary hypertension is that it can be a difficult condition to diagnose. Many of the people who present with pulmonary hypertension are otherwise young and healthy appearing, and so sometimes the diagnosis can be delayed. But typically, we come to the diagnosis based upon a number of diagnostic tests. So commonly, we start with an ECG or electrocardiogram. This can show evidence of right-sided chamber enlargement or strain on the right side of the heart. Most commonly, however, pulmonary hypertension is initially suspected based upon an echocardiogram, which is a heart ultrasound. The echocardiogram can show enlargement of the chambers on the right side of the heart, but it can also give us an estimate of what the pressures are in the blood vessels of the lungs using Doppler. However, the echocardiogram is typically not sufficient to make the diagnosis. Usually, patients who have significant or suspected pulmonary hypertension will end up getting a right-sided heart catheterization where we take a pressure sensor through a vein either in the neck or in, through the leg, and we measure the pressures in the blood vessels of the lungs directly. We also do a number of other complementary tests, such as blood tests, and other imaging tests to make sure that there are no other contributing or background conditions that we need to assess and potentially treat. A severe form of pulmonary hypertension that we typically encounter is what we call PAH, or Group 1 Pulmonary Hypertension. And key importance of identifying that from all these diagnostic tests we just did is that there are now 13 FDA-approved treatments, ranging from pills, either by themselves or in combination, to inhaled medications, to even continuous IV infusions of medicines. For many of our patients, they need uh, water pills or diuretic medications. And for other forms of pulmonary hypertension, we do have evolving therapies, including clinical trials. We also have the ability to detect and diagnose uh, an entity called chronic thrombombolic pulmonary hypertension. This is pulmonary hypertension that's related to blood clots in the lungs that were either never recognized or never resolved. And at our center at uh, AHN, we have the ability to do, to do angioplasty procedures as well as surgery to remove these blood clots.